Ever wondered how adrenergic receptors and agonists work in our body? Well, today we're going to dive deep into this exciting topic. Picture yourself on a thrilling journey, where we navigate the intricate world of these fascinating elements of our physiology. We'll start by unraveling the concept of adrenergic receptors, those tiny proteins that play such a crucial role in our nervous system. Next, we'll explore the role of agonists, the molecules that kickstart these receptors into action. As we delve into the complex interplay between these two, you'll gain a comprehensive understanding of their function and significance. But we're not stopping there. We'll also tackle the pharmacology of adrenergic receptors and agonists, shedding light on how they impact our health and why they're so important in medicine. So join us on this captivating journey, where science meets curiosity and complex biochemistry becomes a fascinating story. Stay tuned as we unravel the mysteries of these powerful elements of our body. So, what exactly are adrenergic receptors? Well, to put it simply, adrenergic receptors are a type of protein found on the surface of cells. They're like the cell's own personal mailbox, receiving signals from the body and then telling the cell how to respond. Now, these signals come in the form of neurotransmitters, the body's chemical messengers, and the neurotransmitters that interact with adrenergic receptors are called catecholamines, which include norepinephrine and epinephrine. You might be more familiar with the names noradrenaline and adrenaline, respectively. These catecholamines are part of the body's nervous system, specifically the sympathetic nervous system. This is the part of your body that controls your fight-or-flight response, which is why adrenaline might sound familiar. It's the hormone that gets your heart racing when you're scared or excited. So, when adrenaline or noradrenaline is released into your bloodstream, it binds to the adrenergic receptors on the cells. This binding action then triggers a response within the cell, such as speeding up the heart rate, dilating the pupils, or opening up the airways in the lungs. Now, it's important to know that there are different types of adrenergic receptors, namely alpha and beta receptors. Each type is sensitive to different catecholamines and triggers different responses. Alpha receptors, for example, are primarily responsive to noradrenaline and can constrict blood vessels, while beta receptors are more sensitive to adrenaline and can increase heart rate and force of contraction. It's a bit like having different keys for different locks. The right key, or catecholamine, will unlock the receptor and trigger the desired response. Understanding these receptors and their functions is crucial for many areas of medicine, from treating heart disease and asthma to managing anxiety and high blood pressure. These receptors play a crucial role in regulating physiological responses. And as we delve deeper into the world of adrenergic receptors, we'll discover just how vital they are to our health and well-being. But for now, let's move on to understanding agonists. Stay tuned! Now let's delve into the world of agonists. Imagine you've got a lock and a set of keys. The lock is your receptor, and the keys? They're your agonists. Just as the right key turns the lock, opening the door, an agonist binds to its receptor, initiating a cascade of events within the cell. This process is fundamental to how cells communicate and respond to the environment around them. Agonists could be endogenous, meaning they are produced within the body, like adrenaline or noradrenaline. These naturally occurring agonists bind to adrenergic receptors, stimulating a response. For instance, when you're startled, adrenaline, an endogenous agonist, floods your system, binding to adrenergic receptors and triggering a fight-or-flight response. Your heart rate increases, your pupils dilate, and you're ready to either face the danger or run away from it. But agonists aren't always endogenous. We also have exogenous agonists, which are introduced from outside the body. These are often in the form of medications. For example, albuterol, an exogenous agonist, is used in treating asthma. When inhaled, it binds to adrenergic receptors in the lungs, relaxing the airways and making it easier to breathe. Agonists can be full or partial. A full agonist fully activates the receptor, triggering a maximum response. Partial agonists, on the other hand, bind and activate the receptor, but not to its full capacity. They elicit a less intense response. This distinction is important in pharmacology, as it allows us to manipulate the body's responses in nuanced ways. But not all keys fit perfectly. Some might fit into the lock but not turn it. These are our antagonists, but that's a topic for another time. In essence, agonists play a crucial role in our bodies. They act as messengers, signaling our cells to respond and adapt to changing conditions. Whether it's a sudden scare, a long run, or even just a change in temperature, they're the keys to the complex locks of our cells, 
driving the physiological responses that keep us alive and kicking. Agonists are like keys, unlocking the potential of our adrenergic receptors. But how do adrenergic receptors and agonists interact? Well, it's a fascinating dance of biochemistry that happens within our bodies every day. Adrenergic receptors are proteins found on the surface of cells in our heart, lungs, and blood vessels, among other places. These receptors are like locks waiting for the right key to unlock them. And that's where agonists come in. Agonists are substances that can bind to these receptors, acting as the key, and trigger a response. In this case, the agonists we're talking about are adrenergic agonists. These are substances, either naturally occurring like adrenaline or synthetically made, that can stimulate these adrenergic receptors. When an adrenergic agonist binds to an adrenergic receptor, it triggers a cascade of events within the cell. This cascade ultimately leads to a response, such as an increase in heart rate, dilation of airways, or constriction of blood vessels. This is why adrenaline, a natural adrenergic agonist, prepares our bodies for fight or flight situations by increasing heart rate, pumping more blood to muscles, dilating airways for better oxygen flow, and so on. Now, just as there are different locks requiring different keys, there are different types of adrenergic receptors, alpha and beta, each with their subtypes. Each type responds to different agonists and triggers different responses. For example, an agonist that binds to the beta-1 receptor primarily affects the heart, increasing heart rate and force of contraction, while an agonist binding to the beta-2 receptor primarily relaxes the smooth muscles of the airways, leading to dilation and easier breathing. What's more, each receptor can be selectively targeted by different medications, allowing doctors to tailor treatments for conditions like asthma, heart disease, and high blood pressure. The interplay between adrenergic receptors and agonists is a beautifully orchestrated biochemical ballet that influences every beat of our heart, every breath we take, and every vessel's flow in our body. It's a complex system, but understanding its choreography allows us to manipulate it in ways that can save lives and improve health. The harmony between these two shapes our body's reactions. It's time to delve deeper into the pharmacology of adrenergic receptors and agonists. When we talk about pharmacology, we're really talking about how drugs interact with our bodies, and more specifically, how they interact with our cells. Adrenergic receptors and agonists are no different, and understanding their pharmacology is key to appreciating their therapeutic uses. Let's start with the basics. Adrenergic receptors are protein molecules located on the surface of cells in various tissues and organs. They respond to adrenaline and noradrenaline, which are hormones that prepare our bodies for fight-or-flight situations. There are two main types of adrenergic receptors, alpha and beta. Each of these has subtypes, which are targeted by different drugs for different effects. For example, alpha-1 receptors are found in the arteries and cause them to constrict when activated, increasing blood pressure. This is why drugs that block alpha-1 receptors, known as alpha-1 antagonists, are used to treat high blood pressure and prostate conditions. On the other hand, beta receptors, specifically beta-2, are found in the lungs and cause bronchial muscles to relax when activated. This is why beta-2 agonists are used in the treatment of asthma and other respiratory conditions to help patients breathe more easily. Now let's talk about adrenergic agonists. These are drugs that mimic the action of adrenaline and noradrenaline, binding to adrenergic receptors and activating them. They are used in a variety of medical situations, from treating heart failure to managing asthma. For instance, consider a drug like dobutamine. This is a beta-1 agonist, and it's used in hospitals to treat acute heart failure. Dobutamine increases the force of heart muscle contractions, helping to pump blood more effectively around the body. Another example is salbutamol, a beta-2 agonist used as a rescue medication in asthma. It works by relaxing the muscles in the airways, making it easier for patients to breathe. However, it's important to remember that these drugs don't come without side effects. Because they mimic our body's fight-or-flight hormones, they can cause symptoms like increased heart rate, restlessness, and anxiety. That's why it's crucial for healthcare providers to carefully consider the benefits and potential risks before prescribing these medications. In summary, the pharmacology of adrenergic receptors and agonists is a fascinating field that continues to evolve. As we understand more about these receptors and how to target them, we can develop better drugs with fewer side effects. And that's a win for everyone. The pharmacology of these elements greatly impacts medical treatments. But why should we, especially medical students, care about all this? Well, let's break it down. 
You see, adrenergic receptors and agonists play a crucial role in treating various conditions. They're not just fancy words to impress at a cocktail party. Adrenergic receptors are the targets of a whole host of medications. They're like the locks that our medicinal keys need to open. When these receptors are activated or blocked, they can affect a multitude of bodily functions. Think about it, heart rate, blood pressure, bronchial muscle contraction, these are all influenced by adrenergic receptors. Now, on to agonists. These are the substances that can kickstart those receptors into action. They're like the spark that ignites the engine. Agonists can stimulate these receptors, mimicking the effects of our body's natural hormones like adrenaline. They can be used to treat a variety of conditions from asthma to cardiac arrest and even certain types of glaucoma, but the importance doesn't stop there. Understanding adrenergic receptors and agonists is not just about treating current conditions, it's also about the future. The more we understand about these intricate systems, the more we can develop new and improved treatments. It's like being given a map, but only knowing part of the route. The more we learn, the more of the map we can uncover, and the more possibilities we can explore. So, you see, this isn't just important for medical students, but for everyone. It's about understanding the complexities of our bodies and how we can manipulate these systems to improve health and well-being. It's about looking at the bigger picture and realizing how every little piece fits together. It's about pushing the boundaries of what we know to discover what we don't. It's about striving for better, for ourselves, and for future generations. And it's about realizing that even the smallest element can have a huge impact. Just like how a tiny key can open a giant lock, understanding the pharmacology of adrenergic receptors and agonists can unlock a world of potential in medicine. Knowledge about these complex elements can lead to breakthroughs in medical treatments. We've covered a lot of ground today on adrenergic receptors and agonists. As we journeyed through the complex world of pharmacology, we delved into the intriguing elements of adrenergic receptors and agonists. These are not just abstract concepts, but integral components of our bodies, playing pivotal roles in how we function and respond to our environment. In the beginning, we explored the adrenergic receptors, these remarkable proteins found in various cells throughout our bodies. We learned how they respond to adrenaline and noradrenaline, two essential hormones that influence our heart rate, blood pressure, and so much more. The receptors are like the body's command center, controlling myriad physiological responses that are critical to our survival. We then moved on to the agonists, these fascinating substances that can mimic or block the actions of naturally occurring substances. They interact with the adrenergic receptors in unique ways, either activating or inhibiting them, thereby influencing our body's responses. From the adrenaline rush you feel when you're excited, to the calmness that washes over you when you're relaxed, agonists are behind the scenes pulling the strings. In our exploration of the interplay between adrenergic receptors and agonists, we discovered how these two entities work in concert, like a well-rehearsed orchestra. When an agonist binds to an adrenergic receptor, it triggers a cascade of events, leading to a specific physiological response. This intricate dance is a testament to the marvels of our biology, reminding us of the incredible complexity and precision of our bodies. In the realm of pharmacology, we discussed how understanding the mechanisms of adrenergic receptors and agonists can lead to the development of effective medications. By selectively targeting specific receptors or using specific agonists, we can manipulate our body's responses, treating a wide array of conditions, from heart disease to asthma and from anxiety to high blood pressure. We also emphasize the importance of these concepts in medicine. A profound understanding of adrenergic receptors and agonists is not just for the sake of knowledge, but it holds practical implications for patient care. It aids in the development of precise treatment strategies, personalized medicine, and improved patient outcomes. In conclusion, the world of adrenergic receptors and agonists is a fascinating one, filled with complexities and wonders. It's a world that's intimately connected to our health and well-being, and understanding it can open new doors in medicine and healthcare. It's a testament to the incredible power and sophistication of our bodies, and to the potential of science and medicine to manipulate these systems for our benefit. The world of adrenergic receptors and agonists is fascinating, isn't it? Thank you for joining us on this journey of discovery.